Okay, next we continue with the duties of principal to his agent. Alright, basically there are three main uh, duties. Eh? There are three main duties of a uh, principal to his agent. Okay, first duty is uh, to pay the agent's commissions or other agreed remuneration unless the agency relationship is uh, gratuitous. Okay, gratuitous here means that uh, when it is a uh, voluntary, okay, secara sukarela. So, amount payable depends on the terms of the contract. If not reasonable, remuneration will be uh, given to the agent, okay, based on quantum merit basis. Okay, if you still remember, definition of quantum merit as part of the remedy of contract law, okay, based on the uh, reasonable compensation. So, in the absence of any special contract, the principal is under a duty to pay remuneration or commission upon completion of all uh, that an agent is contracted to perform based on section 172. However, okay, if agent is guilty of misconduct in the business of the agency, so he lost his right to remuneration. Okay, next. Okay, misconduct means a wrongful or improper conduct which results in a wrongful gain to the agents or wrongful loss to the principal. For example, okay, if the agent has uh, taken secret profit, so agent can be denied of earning of his own commission. This is based on the case of Andrew and Ramsey. Eh? The principal is not bound to pay the agent's commission due to the fact that the agent has received secret profit or bribe. Okay, next. Um, duty of a principal not to willfully prevent or hinder the agent from earning his commissions. Okay, in what ways? Um, principal cannot uh, prevent or hinder the agent from gaining his own commissions. This is where principal should not employ another agent, second agent in the midst of negotiations to deprive the original agent of his commissions or the principal refused to accept the contract made by the agent. Okay, except for estate agent, pointed for the sale of real property where there is no express terms in the agreement that the principal will not sell the property himself. Okay, for example, okay, uh, let's see, eh, the example, um, okay, uh, so the first uh, agent, okay, uh, appointed by the principal to sell the principal house. Okay, and at the same time, the principal also appointed another agent okay, to sell the same property. So, it may hinder the first agent from gaining of his, uh, his own commission. Okay, so this is not um, allowed lah in uh, agency law and it will amount to breach of duty of principal. Okay, next. Um, sorry. Okay, the next duty is the principal. Okay, the principal is entitled to indemnify. Okay, entitled to indemnify and reimburse the agents for as done on the exercise of his duties. Okay, this is based on section 175. Employer of an agent is bound to indemnify. Indemnify means that to pay uh, comp compensation to buy a guarantee rugi, okay, against the consequence of all lawful acts done by the agent in the exercise of the authority conferred upon him. So, in what, situa uh, in what situations agent can be indemnified and reimbursed? Reimbursed also means dibayar semula. Okay, dibayar semula. Eh? Okay, so the first situation is where the agent has incurred loss 
or liabilities in performance of the contract of agency. Okay, when the agent himself suffered loss. In example, okay, in the case of Kiel and Everts against Lim Kit Kiet. Okay, so in this case, okay, the share brokers were entitled to indemnify for their loss because the agent of the executive failed to disclose the fact that he knew about the necessary ground probate had not been taken out in England. Okay, this is where the agent uh, himself is already advanced okay, to the principal, so he must be um, reimbursed. And the second situation where the agent uh, caused injury, where the agent caused injury to the third persons or executions of his authority. <clears throat> okay, this is based on section 176. When one person employs another to do an act and the agent does the act in good faith, the employer is liable to indemnify the agent against the consequences. Of that act, though it caused an injury to the rights of the third persons. And uh, the third situation where the agent suffers injury during the course of his duty. So the agent himself suffers injury, so plenty, uh, sorry, the principal uh, must uh, indemnify the agent. Uh, this is due to the principal's neglects or one of skill. One of skill here means that uh, principal's lacks of Okay, next. Based on section uh, 176, the principal must make composition to his agent in respect of injury caused to the agent by the principal neglect of one of skill. However, agent cannot claim uh, the composition if he acts beyond of his duty or performs his duty in a negligent when he himself contributed to the negligence. So, agent cannot claim against the principal. Okay, example of case in Salaway and another against uh, Matt Lowlin. It was held that the agents who engaged in a fraudulent scheme to defraud their principals will forfeit their rights to an indemnity in respect of transaction which form part of the fraud. So, the agent commit a misconduct in fraud so he cannot a claim any uh, indemnity against the principal. Okay, uh, next we continue with the termination of agency. <clears throat> okay, um, termination here means that the uh, uh, discharge in order to discharge the agency contract, Okay, to uh, repudiate the agency contract based on uh, section 154 to section 163 eh, of the Contracts Act 1950. So, there are two methods where uh, agency can be uh, terminated okay, based on act of the parties and then second by operation of law. Okay, first is by the act of the parties. Contract can be terminated by mutual consent, meaning that both principal and agent may terminate the agency relationship by mutual consent between them. And then they will be free from any uh, obligations under agency contract. In other words, agents, agent and the principal must agree to terminate the contract. Or by unilateral revocation. Okay, take note eh? unilateral revocation is for the principal. Unilateral renunciation is given to the agent. Okay, this is based on section 154. Okay, both parties eh, can make a revocation and renunciation either expressed or implied in the conduct of the parties stated under section. 190 of the contracts act. Okay. So, how uh, the principal may revoke the agent's authority? Okay, based on section 156, principal may revoke the agent's authority at any time before the agent has exercised the 
authority. Uh, okay, before agent has started exercise the authority. But the principal must give reasonable notice or else liability for breach is on party in default or otherwise the agent is entitled to damages. Damages here means compensation eh, based on section 159. So in order to revoke the agent's authority, principal must give reasonable notice. Okay, an agent must not exercise the authority yet. Okay, for example, let's say principal appoint agent to sell the principal house. Okay, if agent already uh, negotiated with the third party, means that agent already uh, partly exercised his authority. So, principal cannot uh, repudiate. Principal cannot uh, revoke the agent's authority. Okay, example of case. How we determine the reasonable notice? Okay, it depends on the facts and circumstances of the uh, case. Okay, for example, in the case of Sorabji against Oriental Security Assurance Co, court held that three and a half months notice was inadequate to properly terminate the agency a relationship which had lasted nearly for 50 years, meaning that okay, long standing. Agency requires a longer period of notice of termination. Maksudnya semakin lama agency uh, agency tu, maksudnya semakin uh, panjang reasonable notice should be given to the agent. Okay. However, in Syarikat Jaya against Star Publication and Berhad, it was held that six months notice was reasonable in terminating a soul. Agency relationship. So agency meaning that we we they just have only uh, one agency uh, purposes. Okay, the relationship. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, when the revocation is effective. Okay, so when revocation is effective. According to section um, 161 eh, of the Contracts Act, termination of the authority of an agent does not so far as regards the agent takes effect before it becomes known to him or so far as regards to the third person before it becomes known to them. In other words, okay, in order, uh, in order for the principle to uh, revoke the agent's authority and in order the revocation to be effective it must be made known to the um, to the agent okay and so far as regards to the third person means to the third party so it only be effective if okay it is made known to the agent okay and then to the third party okay. example you may refer to illustration a of section 161 a directs a b to sell goods for him and agrees uh, to give uh, b a five percent commissions on the price fetched by the goods and a afterwards by later revokes b's authority and b after the later is sent but before he receives it sells the goods for Hundred dollars. So the sale is binding on A and B is entitled to five percent, a five dollars commission. Why? This is because uh, the uh, the principal did not communicate the revocations of authority to his agent. Okay, example of case uh, you may refer to the case of. Uh, Pichapa Chiti against Hajijah. Okay, in this case, the plaintiff had advanced the money to an agent appointed by the power of attorney, but whose authority has been revoked without his knowledge was entitled to recover against the principal. So, if the uh, agent has no uh, notice about the revocation, then he may uh, recover the composition from the principal. Okay, however, the power of the principal to revoke agent's authority is limited. First, if the agent himself has an interest on the property. 
okay, as I mentioned just now, if the agent has a uh, advance of his own money to the principal, then principal not yet paid the money, so principal cannot repudiate the agent's authority, or after the authority has been partly exercised by the agent. Okay, and then unilateral renunciations by the agent. Okay, they know eh, on the terms used. Unilateral renunciation. So, in renunciate by the agent based on section 154. Agent may, okay, renunciate of his authority where agency is for an indefinite duration. Meaning that they don't have any uh, specific periods. Okay, so agent must give reasonable notice. Otherwise, agent is liable for any compensation. And where agency is for a fixed period, agent is liable to compensate the principal for premature renunciations without sufficient cause. Okay, as stated under section 158 of the contracts at 1950. Okay, so done with the first method of appointment of agency by the air of the parties. Now we continue by uh, with the next method by operation of law. Okay, uh, for the operation of law, this is based on the statute itself. Eh? Okay, for example, by the performance of the contract, when both parties already perform the contract, for example, agent already performed the contract, followed the instructions, orders given by the principal and agent uh, and principal already made payment to the agent. So, it will discharge or terminate the agency contract. Or by the expiration of the period fixed or implied in the contract of agency by the death of either principal or the agent. Based on section 154, eh? so agency is terminated. But either the principal or agent is dying. Okay, however, if the agent has interest in the property which forms a part of the subject matter of the agency, agents or principal death will not terminate the contract. Okay, because we need to uh, protect the interest uh, okay, of the party. Eh? And that termination only effective upon agent having notice of the principal death. And um, on the termination of the agency by death of principal, agent must, on behalf of the representative of disease principal, take all reasonable steps to protect and preserve the interest entrusted to him. Meaning that this take a jaga interest of the disease principal. Okay, next uh, uh, circumstance by uh, section 154 by the subsequent insanity of either the principal or agent okay for example let's say if the principal is uh, unsound mind so principal is lack of capacity to enter into contract so it will um, discharge the agency contract by agent is bound to take all reasonable step to protect and preserve the principal's interest by bankruptcy or insolvency of the principal, okay, when the principal declared as bankrupt, so it will also discharge the contract. By happening of an event which renders the agency unlawful, for example, doctrine of frustrations, and under section 163, the termination of agent's authority also ends the authority of all sub-agents appointed by the agents okay so if the agent uh, has appointed any sub agent so terminations of agents authority will also ends the authority of all sub agents so what is the effects of termination by operation of law principal is not bound by the transaction with the third party through the medium of the agent but the agent will be personally liable to the third party if there is any breach of contract this is where okay if the situation happen agent must protect the interest of the principal okay so that's all about law of agency okay so i repeat again the most important parts under law of agency that you must um, know is uh, first the appointments of agent okay five uh, methods of appointment of agent by uh, express 
implied uh, by uh, necessity, okay, ratifications and uh, by uh, estoppel, okay, and then you have to master in the 10 duties of the agent towards the principal and three main duties of principal towards his agent, okay, and last but not least is to know the methods on how to uh, terminate the agency contract. So, if you all uh, have any questions, okay, you can text me eh, as soon as possible. Because uh, this topic is important for your uh, final assessment later. Okay, so thank you for your kind attention. Assalamualaikum.